So, we are at Necrovol. We are officially at the late game stage for Doom Eternal. And this is where death becomes, you know, really, really punishing. So, right here, I always like to get rid of that Cyber Mechavis by just freeze bombing uh, him and, then, and just doing like a blood punch strat. It really, um, it's really good to like take advantage of this fight very aggressively because like they're actually scripted to in fight. So yeah, just try to like rush up to them. It's it should not really be that difficult, you know, if you just did what I did here. But yeah, we're at Necrovol. Um, there are two parts of this level. Both of them are pretty short. I have to say, like you know, I've always kind of considered both of these levels to be kind of like you know one level as a whole. But um, another great thing about Necrovol. Um, for both of these maps is like they're pretty much a breather I personally don't find them too you know difficult to play but with that said you know don't get too greedy Necrovol 1 does got some parts that can be potentially dangerous at times and for that fight always throw that um, freeze bomb right where um, I threw it you have like a really good success rate for getting those three heavy demons <laughs> And if you don't get those three heavy demons, two of them would still be frozen. And, and you could still pretty much just take care of them really easily. Um, yeah, so this part, um, very simple. This is like the easiest fight ever. You just use this quad damage. Get rid of the cyber demon. Then you go for the cyber mancubus. And the cackle demon spawns behind you. Then the whiplash. And I think there's like a prowler. But... Yeah, the whiplash is more like top priority. Easy, easy fight. But yeah, um, you know, Necrovol 1 does got some pretty scary parts. Like, the Archfile fight can be a little bit weird at times, depending where he spawns. And I think that one fight in the little hallway with the Marauder and the Whiplash is really one of like the most underestimated fights. Like, there's only two, like, heavy demons there, but there's not a lot of fodder, there's not really a lot of, like, um, what is it, space that you could run, run away from, like, the Whiplash's, um, what is it, her projectile attack, and her projectile attack is really deadly with, with the Marauder, and you could totally just get killed there really easily if you underestimate that fight, and it's very hard to get your health and armor back, too. But I will eventually show you how to handle these fights. Those are pretty much like the two, I guess, like fights that you really need to like um, pay attention to when it comes to Necrovol One. But it's really not that bad compared to like you know Cultist Base, where Cultist Base is definitely a lot more stressful to play. And so this next part here, um, I think it's the Calabas boss fight, if you would say, or whatever. I, I don't really consider this to be a boss fight, it's just kind of like one of these sections that's there to just spice up the combat a bit. But this fight, when I first played um, Doom Eternal, I did die a couple of times here, but it's really, really simple. I eventually kind of like figured out a strategy that would pretty much just trivialize this, this fight, and you will never ever have to worry about all those, um, what is it? I guess like moving platform where they kind of like float up and then float down. It's really simple. So I'll show you how to handle this fight. And like I said, you'll pretty much always beat this fight once you learn the strategy. So you could pretty much use whatever weapon you like here. I like using the rockets and arbalist. So you see these like two like platforms on the left and the right side. They will pretty much always like, you know, stay there. And it's really good to kind of camp here because, you know, um, the pain elemental, they spawn like in a really good spot where, where you could just snipe them with your chain gun and your um, arbalist. And they spawn the gargoyle where you could just chainsaw them conveniently for ammo. And yeah, that's really all you got to do here. You know, this fight is really, really simple. And I always get kind of like sad when I see people die in this fight because it's really not that difficult. It's such a simple, simple fight. Okay. 
So, um, you could do like this challenge if you want to, but at this point, I pretty much don't care about challenges. I have all like the Praetor suit points that I need, and yeah, pretty much like you know, blazing through everything here. Yeah, I generally like to use the chain gun and grenade combo here for all the prowlers. Then I just rush up to these um, specters and use the freeze bomb. And I do kind of like um, waiting for my freeze bomb to uh, what is it regenerate a bit before I go into like the arch vial fight. So this fight, um, the arch vial actually has three different spawns. There's a 66% chance where he will actually spawn like up top. Of the second level so that's generally like you know um where you want to be to kind of like make sure um he gets spawn trapped but there's a 33 percent chance where, where he'll spawn um at the bottom level with all those like rotating traps and that's the one that i got here and since i actually what is it i actually lost my um extra life rune because of like my crucible glitched out from the last map I decided to kind of take care of this arch file a little bit more safer here, rather than using my crucible. So if you see like the cackle demon and like the cyber mancubus spawn, that's where you pretty much want to use the BFG. And now it's time to look for the arch file and then I notice he spawn down there. And I decided to use the lock on rocket um, grenade combo to get rid of him. That's a very good like um, strategy to get rid of the arch file. And luckily, you know, my lock on rockets didn't glitch out there because I did notice there was a fodder there and I was scared that it might glitch out of it. And then I m might have had to, what is it? I might have had to resort using my crucible again. But then again, you know, I lost um, my extra life rune from the last level, so I did not want to use the crucible for a while. It really sucks that they still haven't fixed the crucible glitch because that's definitely frustrating. I've definitely like died a couple like of times while playing like regular nightmare because my crucible didn't work. That's always frustrating. So this fight, um, yeah, pretty simple. You know, it's just like a make of this with a bunch of fodder enemies. Just use a freeze bomb. And you could pretty much destroy everything here. I think I was trying to check my upgrades here. I don't, I don't remember what I did here. <laughs> Okay, so the buff totem room's a little bit weird at times, but I personally think it's pretty simple if you just do what I do here. I'll show you like the strategy that I use. So, um... I freeze bomb the... Cyber Mancubus, Blood Punch him, and I pretty much go up top here. If you noticed, um, I sh I threw a grenade right there. And that's because like sometimes there's a prowl I mean not a prowler, there's a couple of, like gargoyles that'll try to like come up towards you and they'll try to like damage you. And that's why I use the grenade there to pretty much counter that um, those gargoyles. And right here, you get to see me use the good old. Super Shotgun Rocket Launcher Combo, Remote Detonation Rocket Launcher Combo. That is actually my favorite weapon combo from Doom 2016. And I think that was the only time where I actually used um, this combo in this video, mainly because, you know, Remote Detonation against Pinkies, great! And I decided to use like Super Shotgun on the, what is it, on the Arachnotron. And you can actually do that Ballista Boost pretty easily. I don't know why I failed that twice. It's really simple to do it. Okay, so here it is. This is by far the hardest part, in my opinion, of this level. So I remember I got lucky here. And the main reason why is because of the Marauder. So, you see, I managed to kind of like stun lock them. And I got rid of them super easily. If that doesn't happen, I highly recommend you to freeze bomb the whiplash and, and immediately whip out the crucible just to get her, you know, out of the combat. And then you can just focus on the marauder and you should be good. You know, it's just one marauder. It shouldn't be a problem. 
And yeah, so that's pretty much like the hardest part of this level. I personally think the last fight is really not that bad. BFG is basically your best friend for this situation here. And I'll tell you like when I use the BFG. Always spawn tra uh, spawn trap that, what is, what's her name, the Whiplash. And once you kind of see like the Cyberman Cabis get really aggressive, shoot that BFG there. So right here, I actually played a, a lot more defensively here, mainly because there was supposed to be a Dread Knight that is coming towards me, but I think my BFG actually killed him. So that was kind of weird, because generally that BFG shot should have not killed the Dread Knight, but I got lucky here. So you see, I'll, I'm just kind of waiting for the Dread Knight, and I'm like, where is he? And then I kind of realized, oh, did my BFG kill him? So I decided to be a bit more aggressive here. I was trying to scale for the Dread Knight because the Dread Knight, he's really scary. Definitely gotta get rid of him. And then I kind of realized he wasn't there, so I decided to... Oh, I got hit by that freaking Doom Hunter. That, that was a lot of damage there. Oh, check this Argo shot. Oh, did you see that? That was a nasty Argo shot. And yeah, to um, what is it? This fight, like, um, once you get rid of like the, the dread, the dread knight, two doom hunters are really not that scary at all. You know, basically, um, you could have, um, you could like rush up to one doom hunter, use the good old freeze bomb and blood punch combo, and then lock on rocket, and and then for the last one, you could just kind of like take care of them at a distance. Just use like whatever range weapon you want. Really simple. So there is actually a scary trap that you need to go towards this level to like unbeat um, it. But luckily there's like a speedrun strategy that's very easy to do that I pretty much show right here. And you will never have to do that, like, flame trap, because that thing is really scary. The the damage per second of those, um, flame, of those, like, fire, they kill you really instantly, so. If you just fought, uh, copy what I did right there, you could pretty much pull this trick off really, really consistently. And yeah, that's basically Necrovol Part 1, you know. It's a relatively short level, pretty easy to, and... I'm just basically checking like if there's anything um, noteworthy for me to backtrack, but since there was nothing, you know, I decided to progress. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in Necrovolt Part 2.